the other internal factor, which I think is really relevant to, to today, um, was the memories of difficult past experiences in people's lives. Before we even started this research, we knew that it was likely that some quite negative experiences in people's lives would come up. And knowing the, the link between self-injury and abusive pasts was something that we were probably, uh, we knew that we were likely to hear to some degree. We were quite staggered that actually 10 of the 25 um, had reported cases of serious <laughs> abuse against them. Seven of those had actually been sexual abuse. Um, nine of the 25 had suffered significant <coughs> bereavements in their lives with which they hadn't had appropriate support. Um, and what was really interesting is that professionals and carers weren't always aware either of those experiences either about those experiences, sometimes when people were moving from place to place, their records or their histories weren't, either weren't present or weren't particularly thorough in what that person had been through. So it was a real factor in that people on a day-to-day -day basis were supporting someone whose past was having a really big impact on their day-to-day -day well-being, but they weren't aware of that. And I think that can be quite difficult for supporters when actually they're doing everything they can to support someone and working through lots of strategies with someone and still they're self-injuring. 